Turn your Bibles to Isaiah, chapter 31, Isaiah 31. We as Christians have a lot of enemies, don't we? What are the enemies that we have? I'm going to open this up to you. I know you have a lot of, you probably know who our enemies are. So what do you think? Who are some enemies that we have? What are some enemies? Satan. Satan? Satan. That's right. Satan. Good. That's not number one choice. <laughs> what else? Okay, I didn't hear it. a creative one. <laughs> That's not one I was expecting. Or laziness, right? Boy, are you trying to preach at me or something? No. <laughs> what else? Pride. Pride? Something else was said? Greed. Greed? Okay. Anger. Anger? Okay, what else? Not just uh, emotions or whatever. There's other things out there, right? The culture. <coughs> Our culture? Okay, good. Anything Pol else? Huh? Politics. Politics. There you go. Yeah? Fires. Fires. Fires? Fires. Virus, yes, coronavirus. That was actually second on my list there. Yes. Ourselves. Coronavirus, huh? Ourselves. Ourselves. Okay, good. All right. We have enemies, right? We have a lot of enemies. I have a list here, but I'm not going to read them to you because you've done so well. But, uh, yes, we have enemies. How do we get victory over them, over these enemies? This chapter tells how, okay? And it starts out with a warning. And that's the title of my sermon. Right? A long title. Woe to those who go down to Egypt. That's the warning. Look in verse 1. And the first thing we see, number 1, is that the sure thing may be the wrong thing. The sure thing may be the wrong thing. So verse 1. Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help, who rely on horses, who trust in the multitude of their chariots and in the great strength of their horsemen. But do not look to the Holy One of Israel or seek help from the Lord. You hear what it's saying? <clears throat> woe unto them. Now this word woe, it's not like you're on a horse and you're telling it to stop. You know? Whoa! No, it's <laughs> not it, okay? Whoa. Woe is an old word. It means uh, what a tragedy it is. What a tragedy it is to those who go down to Egypt for help. What a tragedy. Now back in these days, maybe you don't understand what he's talking about here with going down to Egypt. But back in these days, these, uh, if you were a smaller country, you would, and, and, there was, and you knew some big company, was, the company, some big country or empire was coming against you, uh, to war, you could go to one of your neighbors who was a bigger country like Egypt and pay them money. And then they would fight for you. They would bring, and Egypt, they had the best when it came to the war. To war. They had chariots. They had armor. They had swords. They had horses. And actually, Israel did not have horses. They were not allowed to have horses by God. Yeah, well, anyways. So, and, and, and you can kill a lot more people on a horse, right? And you're sort of up above everybody. And you're sort of protected. You can do a lot more with a horse and with chariots. And so, it was tempting for Israel to go down to Egypt and say, Hey, we'll pay you a big, big pot of gold if you will fight for us. And, and it just so happens that, uh, well, I think I got ahead of myself on that, sorry. But Egypt was a sure thing for them, right? 
Now, we don't have Egypt today. None of us are going down to Egypt to say, Egypt, will you help us out here? Uh, but we have all these enemies. What is our sure thing against them? And, and you know, we may have things uh, that we would go to. What is the thing that you look to? What is the thing that if you had, it would solve everything? If it, is it money? Is it getting a loan? Is it your brains? Is it your brawn? <laughs> Not me, sorry. Is it uh, the government? Is it a certain powerful person? Or a popular person? Is it the things that you have? Is it your job? Is it your retirement? You know, what, are the, what is that sure thing that we go to other than God, right? What is that sure thing? What is the thing that we hang everything on? What is your Egypt? Woe to those. What a tragedy it is to those who go down to Egypt for help. Who rely on horses. Who trust in chariots and strong horsemen, but do not look to God or consult him. Who do you look to? Who do you consult? The sure thing may be the wrong thing. So that's my first point. The sure thing may be the wrong thing. Number two, God is far better. God is far better. So how does God compare to Egypt? Look in verse 2. Yet he, and we're talking about God here, yet he is he too is wise. You think Egypt is wise. Well, God is wise too. And he can bring disaster too. Egypt can bring disaster. God can bring disaster. He does not take back his words. He will rise up against that wicked nation, against those who help evildoers. But the Egyptians are mere mortals and not God. Did you hear that? The Egyptians are mere mortals and not God. Their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, those who help will stumble, and those who are helped will fall. All will perish together. Look at God. God is wise. He brings disaster. He does not go back on his word. God fights evildoers. He is against people who help sinners. God is God. God is not man. Often we want to make God man, but God is not man. God is God. How many places can a man be at one place, at one time? How many places can God be at one time? Hmm, yeah, there's a comparison here, right? How smart can a man be? How smart can God be? How strong can a man be? How strong can God be? The Egyptians are men. What about your sure thing? What about that thing that you're relying on? Huh? God is God. There's also God is a spirit, not physical. Right? God can, as a spirit, can do a lot more things than a physical thing can do. God stretches out his hand. And what happens? Nothing? No. The country that was enlisted to help stumbles. That's what it says here. And the country that enlisted them falls. All are destroyed. God is better. God is far better. We need to get this into our mind, right? When we come across these enemies and these enemies scare us, we need to remember, we need to think about this. We need to remind ourselves that God is better, that God is stronger, that God is far better, that God can do it, that God knows what he's doing. Huh? Yes. God is God. So God is better. And number three, God will fight and rescue. Verse 4, this is what the Lord says to me. 
as a lion growls, a great lion over its prey, and though a whole band of shepherds is called together against it, it is not frightened by their shouts or disturbed by their clamor. So the Lord Almighty will come down to do battle on Mount Zion and on its heights. So this verse, this is two illustrations here. The first one shows how God will fight. And then the second one is verse 5. Like birds hovering overhead, the Lord Almighty will shield Jerusalem. He will shield it and deliver it. He will pass over it and will rescue it. So here, he, he rescued. God will fight and God will rescue. Not only is God great, God will fight and God will rescue. And he has these two illustrations. Okay, got the first one? The first one is this lion. And he comes into to the flock at night or something and he gets a lamb and he takes it off somewhere. And he's going to devour it. The shepherd, you know, he sees this and so he gets his shepherd friends together and they go out there and they cling on things and they try to get this lion to get rid of, to, to, to leave, to, to drop the lamb and to leave, but the lion doesn't. The lion's not scared of them. The lion's a lot bigger than they are. And this is how God will fight for us. Okay, that's the illustration. God is not distracted by all these enemies that we have. Right? God is not discouraged by it. God does not worry about what is going on in our world today. God is a lot bigger. And God will take care of it. The second illustration is of birds. And you probably have, I haven't really experienced lion one, but I think you probably have experienced the bird one, haven't you? You ever see a bird hover? And usually it's because there's a cat down there somewhere, <laughs> right? And he's going like this, and he comes dive down, and, and the, the cat's going... <laughs> And, uh, and he chases the, the cat away because he knows his nest is somewhere around there, right? And he's protecting his nest. These birds are. The bird is, the, the bird is not that big. The cat is bigger. But the bird hovers over and he rescues the nest, the babies, from the cat. And so God will also shield us and rescue us. Now, God is saying this. I'm not saying this. I'm just repeating it. God said it. God will do it. Just like the lion and just like the bird, God will fight and rescue. Number four, turn to God. Turn to God. Well, I got well. Okay, there you are. Okay, sorry. Verse 3, verse 6, yes. Verse 6. Return, you Israelites, to the one you have so greatly revolted against. For in that day, every one of you will reject the idols of silver and gold your sinful hands have made. Assyria will fall by no human sword. A sword, not of mortals, will devour them. They will flee before the sword, and their young men will be put to forced labor. Now, the Assyrians was an empire that was in existence there, a world empire, and they were the enemy. Okay, talking about going down to Egypt. Yeah, the Assyrians were the enemy that were going to come down against, the, uh, against Israel. So they're the enemy, and this is talking about, God's talking about what will happen to them. They will fall by no human sword. And verse 9, their stronghold will fail because of terror, fall because of terror. At the sight of the battle standard, their camp commanders will panic, declares the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, whose furnace is in Jerusalem. So that's the future. This is actually a prophecy right here. Uh, Isaiah predicting what's going to happen to Assyria. Uh, and this is what happens. So, but what does verse uh, 6 say? Return, he says. Return. Return. You know, if, 
you want to know what you should do, this is what you should do. Return, you Israelites, to the one you have so greatly revolted against. I wonder, I wonder if we actually are revolting against God and we don't know it. You know, I wonder if some of the things that we do we're actually revolting against God and we don't know that we're doing that. Could God say the same thing about us? Return, you who have so greatly revolted against me. Return. Return. Turn to God. Why? Verse 7, for in that day, in that day, now I want that day to be today, okay? I would love for that day to be today, for in that day, every one of you will reject the idols of silver and gold your sinful hands have made. And then he goes on to tell what will happen to the Assyrians. You see, God will come, and God will deliver, and God will fight for you, and God will rescue, and it may not be today. It usually is not today. But we need to turn to him, and we need to trust him, because he will deliver. He will fight for us. What a tragedy it is to those who go down to Egypt for help. What a tragedy. What a tragedy it is to you if you turn to anything other than God. What a tragedy. What a tragedy it will be to you if you trust in anything else. Why? Why not go down to Egypt? Why not use your sure thing? Because Egypt could not rescue them. That's why. Because your sure thing will not deliver you. The one thing that will rescue you, right? The one thing that will rescue you, that one thing is much, much stronger and able. It. But you don't want to trust it, do you? You don't want to trust God. You can't see God, right? He's just, he's invisible. Yeah, but he's there. And yes, he is far greater. Yes, we have plenty of enemies today. But God is much stronger than all of them put together. Don't forget that. Turn to him. Use those enemies. Use every time that you are scared by them. Every time you worry about them. Use that. Take a time out. Turn to God. And trust him. See God as stronger. See God as bigger. See God as who he is. The God of the universe. See God as a God who listens. See God as a God who hears. See God as a God who loves us. See God as a God who, who wants to take care of us. You see God as who he is. And trust him. Now that's what he, uh, Hezekiah did. King Hezekiah. Okay, this uh, chapter was written probably when King Hezekiah's father was a king. But then eventually King Hezekiah became king. And I would think, and he was king over Judah, uh, I think it's possible that he had read this, that he read this chapter. It's possible he knew these words. And a, a, a time came when the king of Assyria, when the king of Assyria invaded Judah with his big armies. And he came into Judah, into the country. He, didn't, he wasn't to Jerusalem yet, but he was starting to, to invade 
uh, Judah. And this king sent a letter to King Hezekiah and to the people of Judah. And he said, you know, he, he bragged in this letter about uh, how great and how many gods he had already conquered. He bragged about how he defeated all the gods of other countries. And to quote the, the letter, he said, How then can your God deliver you from my hand? Now do not let Hezekiah deceive you and mislead you like this. Do not believe him. For no God of any nation or kingdom has been able to deliver his people from my hand. That's what the king of Assyria said. So what did Hezekiah do? It says that King Hezekiah and Isaiah cried out in prayer to heaven about this. And the Lord sent an angel who annihilated all the fighting men and the commanders and the officers in the camp of the Assyrian king. Wow. You know, God came and God annihilated them. And so he withdrew to his own land in disgrace. Wow. And when he went into the temple of his God, this is talking about the king of Assyria, some of his sons, his own flesh and blood, cut him down with the sword. So the Lord saved Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem from the hand of of the king of Assyria and from the hand of all others. He took care of them on every side. That's the story. And that's what happened. And it's found in uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 32. Why did God take care of Hezekiah? Because he did not go down to Egypt. Right? Instead, he turned to God and he trusted him. Would you do the same? God wants to rescue you. God wants to help. We need to turn to him. Let's pray.